At first, fear had overwhelmed me. I struggled with them in the car as they tried to put a blindfold over my eyes, as they tried to tie those same hands with which I tried to punch. I felt claustrophobic. My ample body squeezed into a space I could not have fit into even as a teenager in secondary school. I was going to die. With a gun dug into my back as the car sped in a direction that I could not determine, I felt certain I was going to die. Afam, my son, his wedding, what would he do? I had now gone past that visceral and obvious fear to a quietened and more sensible state. There was nothing the ears had ever heard to make them fall off or the eyes had seen that would make them weep blood instead of tears. Perhaps we would get out alive like other people I had heard of. At least they had taken off our blindfolds. My friend Obegeli had told me of a man whose blindfold was left on for 11 days. Imagine 11 days of darkness and blindness. Once they took off our blindfolds and untied our hands, the situation became more bearable. They fed us white bread in the morning, white bread in the afternoon, white bread at night. At home, I did not eat white bread. I only ate whole wheat bread on occasion. I needed to watch my blood sugar. The doctor had told me because I was pre-diabetic and since my father had died of diabetes, I knew that my genes were conspiring against me and it was up to me to stop them from winning. So I complained this morning when they brought some more bread. They asked if I thought this was a hotel. Mommy, if your people do not come with the money soon, the young boy said in his deceptively soft voice, you might stop eating at all. Where do you think the money to buy this bread is coming from? His voice rose in anger. It was the first time he had shown any emotion. I am sorry, I said, feeling like a small child who had just been chastised. I knew better now than to add the other things on the list I had made in my head. The room was hot and sticky. People with extra flesh like me tended to sweat a lot. Without a bath, that would make me and the room smell. Could we at least have some time to bathe? clean our teeth? Could our legs be untied? Sitting in one position and lying with tied legs could not be the best thing for two women, especially one already down the old age road. Also, it was really uncomfortable to hold in your pee, especially for a woman my age whose insides had shifted and moved from where the creator originally placed them. Further, it was not right that they should follow so closely when a person wanted to relieve herself. They were nearly young enough to be my grandchildren, if I had had kids at the age some of my mates did. And I kept hearing a cat mew at night, and it made goose pimples stand out on my body. Could they do something about that? Finally, could you please not call me mommy? I am not your mother. You would not treat your mother this way. At least, I hoped so. I told them, I am hypertensive. I need my medication. Can anything be done about this? Anything like what? He asked me. It was a rhetorical question. His voice and face said that I was stepping over invisible bounds. What you should focus on, madam, is praying that your people come through with our money. With that, he swiveled round and was gone, leaving his lackeys to run after him and lock the door on us. I looked at Mabulu now. Our mouths were free so we could talk and we needed to pass the time. So, tell me more about yourself, I said, trying to encourage her. Here we are with time on our hands.